So this is just a quick demo of um, how to how to do macOS audio routing. A um, couple couple different things, but maybe the big one is how to how to set up Black Hole to capture um, your system audio. Um, so as a as a quick demo before I even talk, um, I, you know you can hear my voice. That's coming in through this microphone. Uh, you can hear my guitar. sounds bad because my cables over the strings but you know you get the idea um, you can hear garage band and finally you can hear audio from my system okay so so how do we do this well first first I'll start out by just explaining you know why did I want to do this so the reason I wanted to do all of this this specific setup what I wanted to be able to do was record myself um, playing a solo over a backing track and then um, then record myself watching that recording and kind of analyzing um, the solo that I played and you know talk out, talk about what I was thinking and where I think it can improve and all that kind of stuff right so in order to do that there's a couple different things you need to record um, the easy ones right are your microphone and your guitar Right, so my microphone is this HyperX um, headset. My guitar is coming in through the built-in audio interface on my amp. Um, and then the tricky one is the system audio because the system audio, um, by default, there's no way to record that on Mac OS. So if you want to do that, then what you need is Black Hole. Um, and Black Hole, you know, they say it best, right? It's a virtual audio loopback driver. Um, and it lets you route audio uh, from one application to another on Mac OS. Um, so you go out and you download this either from their website or um, if you use Homebrew, there's a there's a package for it on Homebrew, so you can get it that way too. Um, but either way, once you install it, then you will have this new audio device on your system. Um, and so from there, um, you know, this is not especially intuitive, so it took me a little while in experimentation to kind of figure out how to get this to work. Um, so I'll do my best to kind of explain it, talk about any pitfalls that you may run into. So there are kind of two, <laughs> two to four different things that you need to understand to make this all work. Um, and the first of those, or the first two of those, are virtual audio devices on Mac OS. Um, so there are two different kinds of virtual audio devices. There are these aggregate devices and multi-output devices. And for my specific setup, we need both of them. Um, this is a little bit of a simplification, but you can think of output, multi-output device as being for audio out and uh, the aggregate devices as being for audio in. Although, um, well, that's too much of a, simplication, a simplification because Black Hole is going to immediately throw a wrench in that idea um, but but that'll work to start out so so let's say you want to do exactly what I'm doing right you want to record the system audio you have a microphone you have a guitar you know maybe they're coming in on one interface doesn't really matter what you need to do to record the system audio is you need to set up a multi output device so what the multi output device is for is for routing the audio output of any given application so in my case, um, I, I want to be able to hear what's coming out of the computer. So I need to route it to some device that's going to spit the sound out to me, right? Now, in my case, I'm using my headset, you know, the speakers in my headphones. Um, you could use the speakers on your MacBook. You could use the display audio. It doesn't matter. Um, but the critical thing is that you make this multi-output device and include black hole in this device and what that will do is spit the system audio into black hole so that you can spit it out into some other application elsewhere right so step one is to have this multi-output device step two is to build an aggregate device for all your inputs um, so in my case i want to capture my guitar my mic and my system audio that's why i named it that and what I have done is I've gone into here um, and I've added each of those devices to this aggregate device. 
and we'll we'll talk a little more about this um, about this interface in a second. One one tip that I've heard online, um, and it seems to have worked better for me, is that you want to add your hardware sources first. So in my case, I'm using my amp as kind of the, or I'm using my headset as sort of the main source, and these other two sources um, have the drift correction from there. Um, so either way, though, what you want is you want a piece of hardware to be providing your clock. Um, so add them first, and you know it doesn't it doesn't matter, right? Like I'll mess with this one uh, to avoid messing with the one I'm using, but in this case, right, like if I want to just change the order around, it's no big deal. You just click through these in a different order. Okay, so um, so that's how you do that. So then the next thing is. Once you've created these interfaces, you need to you need to do two different things. Well, you need to do two different things if you want to use GarageBand. So, if you want to just capture system audio, for example, like this video of me, that is coming through kind of like the main system audio. And so the way that you make sure that this audio from any given application on your desktop is coming in to black hole is by cl right clicking on your multi output device that includes black hole and clicking use this device for sound output um, and this is the same thing that you would see if you look at the sound settings um, you'll see that my system output is set to the multi output device so that is half the battle um, but this part took me a little while to figure out. So the other half of the battle is if you're if you're using a DAW or GarageBand, you need to make sure that that is also set to output through the multi-output device. That way, your GarageBand audio output, um, which is considered separately from the system audio, is going through Black Hole as well. Okay. So then, if you want to record your system audio and a microphone and a guitar like we have here, then what you need to do is when you start your recording software, so in my case I'm just using QuickTime, I have an option here to choose a microphone and I am choosing this aggregate device that I have made um, as the microphone for this recording. Okay. So that's, that's it as far as as far as it goes in terms of being able to record all these different sources um, onto a video. But I also want to just talk for a second about how um, how to utilize this aggregate device in GarageBand. So in GarageBand it's a little bit different, right? Like in QuickTime you're just spitting all the all the information from this aggregate device into the video. If you want to do the same kind of thing in GarageBand then you have a little more flexibility. So for example, if I want to record my guitar on this track audio one, then what I need to do is I need to go into this aggregate device and figure out which channels my guitar is coming in on. So in this case, you know, here's my Fender Mustang, channels one and two are the left and right stereo channels from my amplifier. And so if I want to record those in one track, then I pick you know, this stereo um, setting, and I pick one and two. And by the same logic, um, if I want to record my voice, then I would come over to my interface, or the, to my aggregate device, and I would say, okay, the HyperX and its inputs are in on three and four, so that means that if I want to record voice, then I need to do it there. So let's test that out. So if I arm this track, Now, the stuff that I'm saying will come into GarageBand, as you can see. And, you know, by the same, by the same token, um, well, I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to record over this, but, but trust me, see if I, um, if I do this and you watch this little indicator and I make some guitar noises. So, um, so that's basically it, and it's one of those things where it, it seems really complicated until you make sense of it, and then it kind of makes sense, um, 
But the tricky bit for me, the thing that tripped me up a couple different times, was was twofold. So one one thing that was an issue for me was not realizing that I needed to direct audio into Black Hole explicitly, right? Because it, at first I thought, okay, I install Black Hole and then this just picks up my system audio, and that's not how it works. You need to create one of these devices. You need to set it as the sound output for your system audio and for your DAW separately, if, if that's how your DAW works. And then your system audio comes into Black Hole, and then you can use that audio in this aggregate device as an input. So, you know, for a, another example, right, if I wanted to record system audio in a garage band, um, which I don't, but I could pick, um, I could pick these output channels from, uh, well, no, not three and four, I would want, you know, five and six, right? Because these are the inputs from black hole. So if I was gonna, if I was gonna record system audio, um, let's try this and see if I'm right. So now if I play, um, well, actually what I'm going to get now is I'm recording, uh, I'm recording from GarageBand, um, but, you know, same thing. So, right, if we go and play this back, here, we'll just solo this track. So now I'm getting a combination, right, of what was coming out of GarageBand and what's coming out of my system. Um, but not getting my mic and not getting my guitar interface. So, so honestly, the best way is to just play with it a little bit and see like if you can make different things happen. Um, because once once you get a handle on how this works, it all starts to add up. Uh, but it is it is kind of counterintuitive and takes takes some fiddling with before it starts to make sense. Um, so that's it. Let me know if you have any questions.